So this is an example of cognitive load in practice. Um, I've got a, a complete example here of a 3D cube that I typically demonstrate in my teacher training sessions. And this is something I would do as a very first lesson in simple graphics with year six or year seven students. Um, so I'm just gonna talk you through the process, worked examples, following a recipe, uh, moving from uh, novice towards expert requires a step-by-step -step process, which is why we find instructions, well, not all instructions, but we generally find instructions very helpful. So what I would do with this, uh, you know, it, it kind of take people through the process, I suppose. I'm just gonna uh, draw a rough clock face. I've marked out 12 o'clock, two, four, six, eight, and 10 o'clock, and I'm just gonna draw some guidelines between eight to two, 10 to four o'clock, and 12 to six. Now these represent the angles that I need to make my pen strokes, my guidelines. And there are three stages to this. I'm gonna show you how we can get towards this stage. So stage one, I guess, eight to two o'clock. I need to draw three pen strokes from eight o'clock to two o'clock, equally uh, parallel uh, in this position. Stage two, 10 to four o'clock, there's the angle. So I'm just gonna move my hand across and I need to just follow that angle and draw three more pen strokes, ideally parallel and equally spaced, 10 o'clock to four o'clock. And th this represents stage two. Stage three, I've got four parallelograms here and this 12 to six o'clock line needs to go through the center of the parallelogram. So we've got one on top of the other here. So this is our center line. So it's a little bit wonky, but that's pretty much, um, I'm a little bit off here, but this is the kind of principle straight through the middle, 12 to six o'clock. There's the right parallelogram. So there's the center. So straight through the middle if I can. There's the left and there's the third parallel. So we've got three lines again, parallel, going straight through. Now, we need to start, this is ideally the starting point. We can, I'll just draw two circles around here. These are the two starting points to try and find an easy way for a novice, a beginner, to start. So, uh, depending on the length of your lines, we're kind of looking, if I just model where those rings would be on this diagram, that's where they are there. If I just draw the other two here, okay, those are the tops of your cubes. So if I just swap pop pens and connect all these together, this now is the top of my cube. Going to the back right of the cube. So we've got the line down here, back right, the back left there, the bottom left, then we've obviously got the front and then the back right. And that's the, the first stage. So what we're looking for anyone that's doing this for the first time is to be able to do it in a sequence so that it becomes to a point of expertise automatic. So I'll just draw a couple of examples. And then to kind of take the process further, the closer your lines together, the smaller the cube becomes. Okay. The wider the lines, Try and see if I can fit this in the video. Just missed it there. Let me just move my camera slightly. There we go. The wider the lines, the larger the cube. Okay. So if we return to our first attempt and we want to move to this stage. Ideally, I want to be able to try and do this without the guidelines. So that's going to take some time. We might want to use a pencil. We can rub the guidelines out. If we follow the process just here one more time, so eight to two o'clock, 10 to four o'clock, 12 to six o'clock. And I've tried to draw, I'm using a pen, I'm trying to draw as light as I can so that I can really make the final cube stand out from the guidelines because again, moving to X, but we'd want to move away from using the guidelines to draw this freestanding cube. And you can see I've just added a bit of shade in here. So I'll just add a kind of background effect here. So I'm following the angle of the lines. Okay. 
Okay, just a simple bit of rendering. Then we could, rather than where I've gone here, add the dark red around the outside to make it really stand out. I could just emphasize the back edge. A kind of shadow effect, I suppose. And we could just assume that we have a sun on this side or a light bulb with the light reflecting across the top. So the bottom hidden side. So you can see that it's dark. So pen strokes, nice and heavy on this side, same angle. And I might want to just go over that one more time. Okay, to emphasize the dark edge. Obviously this is going to be lighter. So I'll just change the angle of my hatch lines. And maybe just put in a few. And again, this side, just changing the angle slightly. Let's go this way this time. Uh, let's go this way again nice lightly hatched because we've probably got a darker corner here so we'll kind of hatch that in half so you can play around with that adding a pencil adding more detail etc but this is just um, a worked example the step-by-step -step grid following the steps moving to a point where you can then add render to a point then where you could ideally draw the cube, learn the principles of how to draw the cube in 3D, and then add the graphics later. And again, taking it one step further, if I show you one more demonstration, so let's just draw this cube again, vertical lines. Let's, instead of drawing the cube, I might want to use the same area to draw a square base pyramid. I then follow the guidelines further and then I can add a cube underneath and then we have the beginnings of a house and so on and so forth. So a little demonstration, cognitive load and practice. Yes, there's the finished uh, version, but we need to model through step by step how students can move from becoming a novice towards an expert. And again, this works in any context, um, depending on what you're teaching your students. So I hope that little video demonstration uh, helps.